Look, these are the models that I made when I started my 3D journey. Doesn't look that great, right? What if I told you that a year later, I created my first professional model and managed to earn money? And this was no lucky accident, because I would go on and create more high quality assets. So what changed? How did I go from making bad models to creating professional ones and earning money? Here is my guide to creating professional models in Blender. Topology. What is topology? Every model is made out of vertices. The vertices are connected by edges and the edges make the faces. A model's topology can be arranged in various ways. To put it simply, topology refers to the arrangement of vertices, edges and faces. But why does this matter? Well, you see, topology directly influences the model's shading. If you ever tried modeling before, I'm sure you encountered at least some shading artifacts. They can be hard to get rid of and cause a huge headache when modeling. So the key to good models is in the topology. So how do I get good topology? Well, the answer is that there is no answer. It depends on the use case and the purpose of the model. For example, game models tend to have lower vertices and face count because games need to be optimized to be able to run smoothly on different hardware. Game models focus heavily on the silhouette of the model and add the details in the texturing phase. Meanwhile, for offline rendering such as films and VFX, the topology tends to be quad-based and you can have as much vertices and faces as your computer can handle. Topology also depends on the deformation of the model. If you are creating a character and plan on animating it, the topology needs to be able to support the deformation that is happening at the joints. While I can't provide a one-size-fits-all answer for every model's topology, I can point you in the right direction. The tips that I am going to provide are made for high fidelity models focusing on offline rendering. However, if you're creating game models, I still recommend following along as many workflows overlap. First off, we have to talk about subdivision modeling. What is subdivision modeling? Subdivision surfaces allow us to take a low density model and smooth the surface into a high polygon model. This isn't a lighting trick like smooth shading. The subdivision modifier is adding real geometry. So how exactly do you use the subdivision modifier effectively to avoid encountering issues with bad shading? To explain everything in detail, I will be making this model right here. It has some interesting challenges that I would like to cover in this video. When needed, I will pause and explain things a bit more in depth so you can understand it better. My goal is to get you feeling comfortable solving different topology problems. So let's get started. First off, we need a cylinder. Then we rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees. After that, we scale it on the y-axis. Now we need to duplicate the cylinder and rotate it 90 degrees again. Then we need to make sure that the bottom of the cylinder is exactly in the middle of the other cylinder's edge. After that, we can move the cylinder to the left. Then we need to select this cylinder and add a Boolean modifier and set the object to the other cylinder. When you apply the Boolean modifier, both cylinders should get merged together. We can see this better in wireframe mode. Now, we are going to be working on creating this cutout. So let's get back to our original mesh. First off, we are going to add an edge loop around here, and then we will delete this face. Then we will extrude the edge that will define our cutout. Now we will extrude these edges and start working on filling in the empty space. Then we will add nine edges here, because there are nine vertices over there. Fill in the empty space. Don't worry about the triangles here. We are going to fix them later. Now fill in the bottom. To fix the triangles, add in an edge loop like so and slide the vertices to create quads. Now we need to fix this face. Currently it isn't a quad because it has five vertices. To correct this, we are going to add an edge loop and slide it so it sits exactly on this vertex. Now, make sure you select everything. Press M and then merge everything by distance. Now everything should be in quads. When subdivision modeling, you should try and keep the quads roughly the same size. Currently, the quads here are way smaller than the quads there. To fix this, we are going to add a bunch of edge loops around the mesh to create evenly sized quads. Now we can delete these faces. We will worry about filling them in later. We are not going to cut out the hole here just yet. First, we need more geometry to work with. So to get more geometry, we are going to add the subdivision modifier. The subdivision modifier is going to smooth out our mesh. However, we don't want this effect in some places. We want these edges to be sharp. First, we are going to work on this edge. To make it sharp, we need to select the whole edge and press Shift E to crease it. After that, this edge should be sharp. Now onto the other edge. 
This one cannot be creased because it's on a curved surface. Creasing it would ruin the curvature of this cylinder and introduce some weird shading. To fix this, we are going to have to add supporting edge loops. Now we can apply the subdivision modifier to get more geometry. After doing all that, we can delete these faces. Now, we will take this edge and extrude it until it reaches this edge. Then we connect the edges. We need to add three loops here because there are three vertices there. The same applies to this side as well. We need to add 13 loops here because there are 13 vertices over there. Now just simply fill the rest. Then we need to add the subdivision modifier. And again, we need to sharpen these edges. To do that, select them and press Ctrl B to bevel them. In the Bevel Properties panel, make sure that the shape is set to 1 and that the mitre outer setting is set to Arc. Now we need to fix these four faces. Currently, every single one of them has six vertices. To convert them into quads, select these two vertices and connect them by pressing J. Now repeat the same thing on the other faces. Now, the cutout is finished. After that, we can begin working on this part. We are going to take these six faces and extrude them up. Remove the subdivision modifier to see what is happening with the geometry. Add an edge loop around here, then extrude these faces. Extrude them again and lower them down a little. Add a bunch of edge loops to create evenly sized quads. Now let's reapply the subdivision modifier. We need to fix these corners and make them sharp. To do that, we need to select the corners that need to be sharp and bevel them. Again, make sure to have the correct bevel properties. Now all of these faces are engons. We need to fix that. First of, we will work on these faces. To fix them, just connect two vertices by pressing J. Do the same to these faces. Now we need to fix these engons. To do that, connect the vertices to make triangles and then add an edge loop. Now it's finished. Now let's create this hole. Select these faces and press I to inset them. Before the next step, make sure that you have the loop tools add-on activated. Then you can select the faces and press right click and go into the loop tools menu and select the circle option. Play around with the circle settings to get things looking good. Now double tap G and slide the vertices around to create more space for the circle. Now just simply extrude the circle by pressing E. Now when we add the subdivision modifier, we can see that our edges are not sharp. So select the edges that need to be sharp and bevel them. The circle is finished. Now we will work on this part. Select these faces and inset them by pressing I. Now select these faces and extrude them inward. Then select the edges that you want to keep sharp and bevel them with the correct bevel properties. To fix the engons, just do what we did previously and connect the vertices by pressing J. Now this detail's finished. Now we can work on this piece. Select these faces and inset them by pressing I. Then select the inside faces and right click to open the loop tools menu and select the circle option. Then select the circle's edge and bevel it. Take these faces and extrude them inward. When we reapply the subdivision modifier, we see that we need to sharpen some edges. Select the edges that need to be sharp and bevel them. And once again, make sure that the bevel properties are correct. Then fix these engons by connecting them to other vertices by pressing J. Now let's fix the holes in the cylinder. Select this loop and fill it with an engon by pressing F. Inset the face twice and then delete the middle engon. Select the circle's edge and press F3 button and type in grid fill. This will fill the circle with perfect quad topology. You might need to play around with the grid fill settings. Select these faces and extrude them down. Then deselect the outer loop and extrude the faces again and then make sure to add more edge loops for even quad distribution. When we reapply the subdivision modifier, we see that we need to sharpen some edges. By now you should know what to do. Simply bevel the corners. The exact same thing is done to fill in this cylinder. Now there is only one small detail left to complete. Select these loops and bevel them. Now select the faces and press Alt E and extrude the faces along the normals. Now add a bevel to fix the rounded corners. And there you have it. The model is finished. I hope you learned something new and I will see you in the next one.